So the first thing we need to do with a croque monsieur is to get the crunchy bit, which is toasting one side of the bread. We want the other side untoasted because we want that to slightly absorb the, the bechamel sauce and make a sort of souffle. So what you'll notice when I'm doing um, any sort of hob work is that I don't fill the saucepan when it's on the hob. And there's never a saucepan on a hot hob that's empty. The reason we don't want to fill the saucepan on the hob is because spillages on the hob takes time to clean up, creates smoke, and um, is you have to then do a, a dangerous wipe with a hot hob. So we're always taking the saucepan off when we're adding the ingredients we need one at a time. So in the saucepan at the moment, we've got uh, butter, corn flour, and a little bit of mustard, and we're creating um, a roux, R-O-U-X. That's melted butter uh, and corn flour that creates a sort of paste. Um, and you keep stirring this roux so that the um, corn flour uh, granules don't burn. Then we take it off the hob when it's melted and we add milk. Now you will need to keep this moving because um, if you don't keep it moving, the corn flour starch granules can burn onto the bottom of the saucepan and then you will never get a smooth sauce. But what you can do when you first put the milk in is to quickly check your toast so that it's not burning. So this is uh, doing multiple activities really. You've got to keep an eye on your toast and you've got to keep an eye on the thickening of your um, of your sauce. Um, keep the whole mixture moving and um, gently but vigorously um, onto the bottom of the pan. And what's happening in the pan now is, a, is something called gelatinization. So um, the starch granules heat up and at 60 degrees they start to absorb the liquid and swell. And then they get so fat that at 80 degrees they um, burst because they've absorbed five times their volume of water. They burst open and release the starch molecules and that's what thickens the liquid. That process is called gelatinization and you can see it happens quite quickly. Um, and now it's a smooth sauce and this is a bechamel at this stage. Um, and if you feel that the sauce is sticking at any point, lift the saucepan off the hob. Don't try to turn the hob down because it won't react quickly enough. So make sure that you keep lifting the um, saucepan off the hob to control temperature range. At this point, as a bechamel, it's a white sauce that's flavoured with mustard. You can add herbs to this if you want to um, and create a sauce that um, you can use for other things like the top of a lasagna. We're going to add cheese, grated cheese, so that it does, uh, melts in really quickly and that then turns it into a Mornay. So I'm going to take it off the hob and add the cheese. And then the heat of the sauce should be enough to melt the cheese gently. Um, so put it on the hob for a little while but then and keep stirring it but then after a while you don't actually need it on the hob you can take it off. Now as this uh, mixture cools it will thicken so whilst it's still warm before you need to use it you can add a little bit of milk to make it less thick. Just stir it in really well because gelatinization when it cools creates a firmer gel down to retrograde retrogradation. You, we'll be doing a little bit more about that in later lessons. This is now ready to set aside so that you can build your layers of your croque monsieur. So here you can see I've got the crunchy sides facing up. I'm going to flip them over um, and they're on a vessel created with foil uh, scrunching the sides up and that way you can transfer it because it is going to be a little bit messy you can transfer it from the work table to the grill easily and safely and foil of course is heat proof it dissipates heat very very quickly though so you don't need to worry about burning yourself on the foil so put the first layer of um, Mornay on and uh, this adds a sort of um, moisture and glue to the base layer and then I'm using cured beef, but another meat is um, ham, thinly sliced ham, Canadian ham, smoked ham, uh, turkey slices, chicken slices, um, pepperoni if you want to. 
um, and then I'm adding a little bit more as sort of glue so for the next layer of protein. These slices are very very thin so although it looks like a lot of meat it actually is a lot thinner than a normal beef slice. And again another glue layer for the second layer of bread and you can actually create more than two layers. You can have three thinner layers if you want to. Here I've got uh, two rather thick doorstops actually. Uh, this works with tiger bread um, as well as the brown bread that I've used. Now when you're putting on the Mornay sauce right at the end you want to cover the um, bread right to the end so that the edges don't burn under the grill and actually you want enough sauce so that it drips down the side a little bit and you can see that this sauce has actually thickened as it's cooled so even in the time it takes me to build this layer the sauce is retrograding but it doesn't matter because as soon as it goes into the uh, grill it'll um, loosen up again and as if there's not enough cheese on this you can add some more grated cheese I'm using a completely inappropriate knife here I want you to tell me what kind of um, instrument I should have used to clear that pan better so more cheese this is a very cheesy dish now you can lift the foil vessel up just check that you've got a good grip on it before you actually take it to the grill I haven't got a good grip here and I've torn it so I'm just moving it along a little bit that's it it's nice and firm take it to the grill and put it on the grill just pat down the foil so that it doesn't touch the grill um, elements use oven gloves to put the grill pan in and then leave it in a hot grill until it bubbles and you can determine how far you want it to brown if you don't want any browning it'll take less time I've got medium browning here actually um, I'm making this for my daughter but my husband likes more browning on this actually and then transfer it to a plate now this needs to be eaten straight away it's not really good to, to store a croque monsieur um, because retrograde retrogradation actually firms up that sauce a little bit too much and affects the eating quality it has to be eaten with a knife and fork you can't lift this because it's very very hot so these are the questions I'd like you to um, attempt um, again list the equipment and resources I've used you should be able to derive that from the video what form of plant energy thickens the source describe the difference between a suspension source and a, and a solution what is the difference between a bechamel and a Mornay what is the name of the thickening paste that is in the pan before the milk is added what other components can you add to the layers find out what a croque madame is why use grated cheese instead of just chopping it up cubed and what are the forms of heat transfer now some of these questions might need you to do a little bit of research before you can answer them um, you may want to look up and remind yourself what a uh, solution is for instance and you may want to have a look at the other options that other people have put into their croque monsieurs. You'll find a whole load of YouTube videos, mainly American ones, that show the different kinds of ingredients that people use. It doesn't just have to be protein and fats and cheese and starches. You can add some um, green leaves in there. So look at what other people do um, and this will give you some idea um, as to what your options are.